right children now we are going to start the exercise as I told you all before in the previous chapter before you watch this video you all have to answer all the questions by yourselves so after writing all the answers you can watch this one and check whether you have done it correctly so you will understand better right children we'll start this one first of all we are going to start with the exercise given in the textbook right so the exercise match the appropriate way of generating electricity with the things used for it two sides given you have to match them this side given way of generation this side things used now you all know there are different different methods of generating electricity there are three main methods of generating electricity what are they using dynamos using solar cells and using electrical cells right let's go through this one hydropower stations hydropower stations what is used to generate electricity to make the turbine work we use a flow of water right let's see chemical sunlight coal and flowing water therefore with hydropower stations what is the thing used here flowing water next one coal power stations do you remember how electricity is generated in coal power plants children coal is burned and a large amount of heat is obtained and that heat is used to heat a large amount of water and here steam at high pressure is produced the steam at high pressure is used to rotate the turbines and thereby electricity is generated okay so coal power stations coal is used right coal dry cells dry cells are type of chemical cells right so in dry cells using chemical reactions electricity is generated so dry cells chemicals and the next one solar cells solar cells generate electricity using sunlight right Hydropower stations using flowing water, coal power stations using coal, dry cells using chemicals, and solar cells using sunlight generate electricity. So, this was a very easy question. We'll move on to the next. Number two draw a sketch of a wire and show how the conducting and insulating parts are placed. Do you remember? We did this activity to study conductors and insulators. Now, conductors are the materials that conduct or carry electricity. And insulators do not carry electricity. Now, when you consider the wire, you all know that the conductive wires are covered with a plastic cover. This part is, is an insulator, right? So, we have to draw that type of wire and label them. We will draw that now. We can draw the wire like this. So this is the outer cover. You can draw the outer cover like this. And you know that from the outer cover, other pieces of wire come out like this. And you all know this part conducts electricity, but this is an insulator. Okay, we'll mark them. Right. So draw a sketch of a wire and show how the conducting and insulating parts are placed. Okay, so this is the conducting part. conducting part and this is the insulating part insulating part okay this part does not conduct electricity for the protection of the user normally conductive wires are covered with these type of insulators okay right we'll move on to the next 
Why is it not safe to touch electric equipment with wet hands? Now we discussed this many times. What is the reason children? Water is an electrical conductor. So what happens if we touch the electric equipment or the appliance with wet hands? In case electricity is leaking from that appliance, what will happen? Because our hand is wet, that electricity passes through our body. Through water it passes and therefore we will get electrocuted or we will get electric shock. That is why we should not, uh, it's not safe to touch electric equipment with wet hands, okay? We will write. Because water is, a, is an electrical conductor. When we touch the appliance with wet hands, electricity flows from Lions to our hand and we may get electrocuted. Okay? Because water is an electrical conductor. When we touch the appliance with wet hands, electricity flows from the appliance to our hand and we may get electrocuted or we may get electric shock. Okay? Right. We have completed the exercise given in the textbook. But this is not the end. We are going to do some additional exercises as well in order to improve our knowledge. Okay? We will move on to the next Additional exercise 1. Underline the more suitable answer. Now when you answer these type of questions, you all can see in one question, four answers are given, four choices are given. So when you select the answers, you have to select the more suitable answers. Sometimes when you go through these type of questions, you will find there are more than one correct answers, right? So in that case, out of many correct answers, you have to find the most suitable answer. Right children? Therefore, you have to read all four answers very carefully in these questions. Understand? We'll go to the first one. Number one. The metals that should be used in order to generate electricity with the lime fruit. Now do you remember this one? What are the metals we need? Do you remember we used a lime fruit and we inserted two metal sheets. What are they children? Copper and zinc. Do you remember zinc sheet was a silver color one and copper sheet was a metallic brown color one? Right. So the first answer, zinc and carbon. Carbon and copper. Copper and gold. And the last one, zinc and copper. Zinc and copper is the answer. Right. Number two, the instrument that is used to identify a flow of electric current. We learned about three different types of instruments that we can use to identify a flow of current. Ammeter, galvanometer and milliammeter. So galvanometer and milliammeter can be used to identify small electric currents, right? And ammeter is a kind of large electric currents. So the answers. Ammeter, dynamo, voltmeter, ohmmeter. So the answer is ammeter. Right. 
Number three. The scientist who discovered that electric current is generated by moving a magnet inside a coil of wire. So you remember we did this activity to prove that when a magnet is moved near a coil of wire, the coil of wire generates electricity. Who introduced this idea, children? That was Michael Faraday, right? So the scientist who discovered that electric current is generated by moving a magnet inside a coil of wire is who discovered this? Michael Faraday. The other names? John Dalton, Niels Bohr, Michelangelo. Michael Faraday is the answer. Right. Next one. The answer that has areas where wind power plants are located. Basically in Sri Lanka, Wind power plants are located in Puttalam and uh, Hambantot areas. But some other areas, many uh, wind power plants are there like uh, uh, Ambevel area. Right? So we'll go through the answers. Hambantot Puttalam. That is correct, but we are going to go through all the answers. Hambantot Candy. Puttalam Candy. Candy Badulla. No. Answer is Hambantot Puttalam. Right. Next one. Out of the methods given below, the most commonly used method of generating electricity in Sri Lanka is. Now, in Sri Lanka, there are different methods of generating electricity children. Right. Basically, we use hydropower plants and thermal power plants. Right. In Norochole, we have thermal power plants. Right. There are a number of hydropower plants as well. Apart from that, we have wind power plants as well, right? So out of the methods given below, the most commonly used method of generating electricity in Sri Lanka is using wind power. Wind power is used in Sri Lanka, but that is not the most common method, right? Using hydropower. Hydropower is one of the most common methods. Nuclear power? Sri Lanka, in Sri Lanka, we don't have nuclear power plants. Using sea waves also not common in Sri Lanka, right? So out of these four methods, using wind power, using hydropower, nuclear power and sea waves, using hydropower is the most common method. Hydropower and thermal power as well, okay? And also apart from that, we have uh, fossil fuels, diesel power plants as well, right? Number six. A source of energy that is not used to generate electricity. That is not used. We'll see. Nuclear energy, yes. Nuclear energy is used to generate electricity. Even though not in Sri Lanka, many other developed countries, they use nuclear power plants to generate electricity. Right? Sunlight, yes. Using solar cells and solar panels, we can generate electricity using sunlight, right? Sea waves, yes, sea waves also used to generate electricity, right? Tsunami waves, no. Tsunami waves are destructive types of waves. Tsunami waves cannot be used to generate electricity. All these three methods are used, but tsunami waves are not used to generate electricity, okay? Right. The first person to find that it was possible to generate hydropower in Sri Lanka was who's the person? DJ Vimala Surendra. He's the first person to uh, give this idea that uh, Sri Lanka can be used to generate hydropower. There's even a hydropower plant named after him. Right. So Cyril Pondam Peruma, DJ Vimala Surendra, Sarat Gunapala, Arthur C. Clark. DJ Vimala Surendra. Number eight, a type of chemical cell with a lot of weaknesses is. Now, do you remember when we learn about chemical cells, we learn there are two main types of chemical cells. What are they, children? Primary cells and secondary cells. Primary cells cannot be recharged, but secondary cells can be recharged. And at the same time, as an example for these uh, uh, chemical cells, we learned about simple cell. Do you remember we made a simple cell in the lab? 
So simple cell is made by immersing a copper sheet and a zinc sheet in dilute sulfuric acid. Right. So the weaknesses, now do you remember there were so many weaknesses of this simple cell. Number one, it is not portable because it contains a liquid. Right. And at the same time, we cannot obtain a continuous flow of electricity using these simple cells. Right. Therefore, those are the weaknesses of simple cells. Right. So a type of chemical cells with a lot of weaknesses is simple cell. Compared to dry cell, solar cell, secondary cells, simple cell is weaker, right? Next one. The type of cell that is not a secondary cell is. Now secondary cells can be recharged. Not a secondary cell means it should be a primary cell. Primary cells, after using, when the chemicals get exhausted, we cannot recharge them, right? So, car battery, car battery is a type of secondary cell. They ask, that is not a secondary cell, right? Mobile phone battery can be recharged. Dry cell, can we recharge them? We cannot, right? Motorbike battery also can be recharged, therefore, the only cell that cannot be recharged, which means a primary cell, not a secondary cell, is dry cell. Right, number 10. There are two terminals of a simple cell. What are they? Positive terminal and negative terminal. Okay, so when we consider about the simple cell, what is the positive terminal? Copper sheet. What is the negative terminal? Zinc sheet. So copper and zinc are the two terminals of a simple cell. Do you remember how we made this children? Right. Do you remember we used dilute sulfuric acid in a beaker like this? Right. And then we immersed these two sheets, two metal sheets like this. And then we connected the small bulb to this. Right? One sheet was copper sheet, the other sheet was zinc sheet. Zinc sheet. Okay? We can make a simple cell by immersing a copper sheet and zinc sheet in dilute sulfuric acid. Right. So what are the two terminals of a simple cell children? Zinc sheet and copper sheet. Right. So here zinc sheet acts as the negative terminal and the copper sheet acts as the positive terminal, okay? Copper and iron, carbon and zinc, copper and zinc, iron and carbon. Copper and zinc is the answer. Right. Next one. An example of a primary cell is, primary cells means the cells that cannot be recharged, okay? Dry cell, yes, dry cell cannot be recharged. That is correct, but we are going to go through the rest. Lead acid accumulator means vehicle battery can be recharged. Car battery can be recharged. Mobile phone battery, yes, can be recharged. Therefore, primary cell is dry cell. 12. An instrument that is used to measure a small electric current is we learn about two instruments that can be used to measure a small electric current. What are they? Milliameter and galvanometer. Let's check. Ammeter. Ammeter can be used to measure an electric current, but a little larger one, right? Voltmeter, multimeter. Galvanometer is the most correct answer. Right. Next one. The voltage of a Typical dry cell is, voltage of a typical dry cell is 1.5 volts children, okay? 
it's 1.5 3.5, 1.3, 230 volts. No, the answer is 1.5 volts. Number 14. The instruments indicated by the symbols. What is this? Circle inside capital A. Inside a circle, capital G. What is this, children? A means a meter. This one is galvanometer. Right, the instruments indicated by the symbols, this and this, respectively, which means in order we have to write the answer, select the answer. A meter and voltmeter, yes, this is a meter, but this is not voltmeter, right? Galvanometer and a meter, this should be the first one, right? This is actually, this is galvanometer, this is a meter, but because they are not in order, we can't select the second answer. A meter and galvanometer, yes, because in the question we have to select the answer in order. Volt meter and galvanometer, no. Answer is a meter and then galvanometer. First a meter, second galvanometer. Right. So these type of questions, please read very carefully, children. Right. Even the second answer is correct. The same instruments are mentioned, galvanometer and ammeter, but the question specifically says these two respectively, which means in order. Therefore, the first one should be ammeter, the second one should be galvanometer, right? Number 15. The component which lets the electric current flow in one direction is, do you remember we learned different types of uh, electronic components and some of them uh, let electric current flow to one direction only. What are they children? Different types of diodes are the answer, right? So there are different types of different different types of diodes. We learn about rectifying diodes and LED which means light emitting diodes. Let's check whether the answers there are which lets the electric current flow in one direction. Cell? No. Right? Diode, yes, correct. Resistor, light dependent resistor. Answer is diode. LED is also correct, but here the answer given is diode. The following symbol indicates. What is this symbol? You all know that when this arrow with a line is there, that is for diode. If the same one is there with two arrows, like this, this is the light emitting diode, which means LED, okay? LED is light emitting diode, that is the answer. We'll go through the rest. LDR, no, LDR means light dependent resistor. It's not a type of diode. Diode, no. How do you draw diode, children? This is the symbol of diode. The same thing but these two arrows are not there right this is diode right and the switch no switch is not the answer this indicates LED okay answer number one we'll move on to the next number 17 to control the amount of current that flows through a circuit sometimes when we make different types of circuits we have to control the amount of electric current that flows through it, right? Which means sometimes we have to let a lot of current pass through the circuit and sometimes we have to reduce the amount of current. What can we use in this case, children? We can use resistors, right? Because resistors with different, different resistances can be used to uh, control the amount of current, right? So resistors are used. Light emitting diodes? No right? Diodes also no. Diodes and light emitting diodes let electricity pass only in one direction, okay? Switches are used? No. Switches are used to turn off the circuit whenever we want, okay? So to control the amount of current that flows through a circuit, we use resistors, right? Number 18. Materials that conduct electricity are known as, there are two types of materials. Some of the materials 
they let electricity pass through them and some of them not, right? Therefore, the materials that conduct electricity are known as conductors. The materials that do not conduct electricity are known as, what is that children? Insulators, right? Insulators, no. Conductors, yes. Capacitors, no. Diodes also, no. Conductors is the answer. Number 19. The circuit symbol of the instrument that is used to measure an electric current. Measure an electric current. What is used to measure an electric current, children? A meter is used to measure an electric current, right? To measure small electric currents, we can use galvanometers and milliameters, right? So, to measure an electric current flows through a circuit. Here, what is this symbol? This is the symbol of a galvanometer. This is the symbol of an ammeter. This is for resistors and you all can see there are two long and short lines. So what is this? This is for dry cell, right? This is for electric cell. We can use this, okay? Out of these two, galvanometer and ammeter, both can be used to measure electric currents. But specifically, galvanometer can be used to measure smaller currents. Here mentions to measure an electric current flows. Therefore, out of these two, the most correct answer is a meter. Right. 20. The handle of an electric iron is made of plastic because plastic is. Now, whenever we use different types of electrical appliances. Most of the time handles or holders are made of non-conductors or insulators. What is the reason? In case electricity is leaking, we will not get electrocuted, right? Otherwise, if we make the handles also with a conductor, what will happen? In case the electricity is leaking, we will get electrocuted, right? Therefore, to prevent that, for our safety, the handles are basically made with insulators, right? So the handle of an electric iron is made of plastic because plastic is a type of insulator. An elastic material, a strong material, an insulator, light in weight, right? So strong and light in weight also the features of plastic, but we use plastic in electric iron to make the handle of the electric iron is another purpose. It's a different purpose. That is because electricity does not flow through that, right? So it is an insulator. Because of this property of plastic, we use it to make the handle of electric iron. Understand? Right. 21. A liquid metal that conducts electricity well is. Most of the metals are at solid state. What is the example for a liquid metal, children? Mercury, right? So a liquid metal that conducts electricity. We learn that most of the metals conduct electricity very well, right? So water, water is a liquid but not a metal. Wine, spirit and alcohol also liquids but not metals. Mercury is a liquid and at the same time it's a metal. So this is the answer, right? Water also conducts electricity, but the question asks a liquid metal. It should be a liquid. At the same time, it has to be a metal. Both the conditions should be there. So, answer is mercury. 22. The following symbol indicates this symbol is used to draw. What is the circuit symbol, children? This is for resistors. Okay. Diode, conductor, LDR. Resistor. Resistor is the answer. 23. The unit used to measure resistance is. What is the meaning of resistance? The barrier towards the flow of electricity is known as resistance. What is the unit used to measure resistance? That is ohm, right? Volts, ohm, ampere, milliampere. Answer is ohm. 24. The type of bulb with the lowest efficiency. Lowest efficiency. We'll go through the answer. 
filament bulb, LED bulbs, CFL bulbs, all of the above. Do you remember we learned that these are three different types of bulbs and some of these bulbs consume a large amount of energy, electricity, right? If a certain bulb consumes a large amount of energy, it has the lowest efficiency, right? And some other bulbs, they consume only a little amount of electricity and their lifetime is also very high. Those type of bulbs are considered to be the bulbs with highest efficiency, right? So out of this filament bulb, LED bulbs and CFL bulbs, which has the highest efficiency, which has the lowest efficiency? We learned that LED and CFL bulbs, they have a higher efficiency, right? And filament bulbs consume a large amount of energy. Therefore, out of these three, filament bulb has the lowest efficiency, right? Answer number one. 25. After using CFL bulbs, we should dispose of them correctly because what is the reason? Do you remember we discussed that inside the tube of the CFL bulbs, there is mercury. Now, mercury is a very harmful substance when it gets exposed to the environment, right? Right. They contain mercury and can be very harmful. That is the answer, but we'll read the rest. The bulbs are made of glass. The filament is poisonous. None of the above. The answer is the most correct one is number one. They contain mercury and can be very harmful. 'll we'll move on to the next exercise number two we had to write answers write four ways of conserving electricity at home we learned many ways of conserving electricity at home what are the ways children now when we iron clothes we have to iron many clothes at once that is one way of conserving electricity and we can use bulbs and other appliances that consume little amount of energy or we can uh, simply say using uh, efficient electrical appliances right and when we use the refrigerator we should not open the door many times time to time we should not open and even after opening it as soon as possible we have to close it right children there are different uh, steps that we have to take to minimize the energy consumption by the refrigerator we'll write some of these things Right, four ways of conserving electricity at home. Number one. Using efficient bulbs. Efficient bulbs. Number two. Switching off appliances that are not in use. Number three, ironing. Many clothes at once. Many clothes at once. Minimizing. Minimizing the number of times. Number of times of opening the fridge door opening the fridge door okay children using efficient bulbs switching off appliances that are not in use ironing many clothes at once minimizing the number of times of opening the fridge door Okay, there are many other ways. Number two, 
write three ways of preventing the accidents caused by electricity. Even under this one, we learn many methods. What are the ways, children? So keep the electrical appliances, wires and plug points. Keep them out of reach of children, right? And uh, when we handle electrical appliances, our hands should be dry. Do not handle the appliances with wet hands, right? Whenever we handle electrical appliances, it's better to wear rubber slippers, okay? Those type of things we can write, okay? We'll write. Number one, not handling electrical appliances with wet hands. Switching off, switching off, multi sockets when not in use. not in use. Right, one last thing. We are in rubber slippers. When handling electrical appliances right yeah we have asked to write three ways not handling electrical appliances with wet hands right switching off multi sockets when not in use wearing rubber slippers when handling electrical appliances Okay, we'll move on to the next. Exercise number three. Draw the circuit symbols of the following appliances. Electric bulb, electric cell, switch, resistor. Now this is pretty easy. We'll draw them. What is for electric bulb children? Do you remember? Right. You can draw it like this. Right. This is for electric bulb. Then electric cell. How to draw the cell? Two lines. One is longer than the other. That is the positive terminal. This is for electric cell. Okay. Switch. Do you remember how we drew switch? This is for switch. Resistor. Resistor, we learn two ways of drawing a resistor. We'll draw both of them. Right. This is one method. Another method is also there. You can even write capital R. Okay? So electric bulb, electric cell, switch, resistor. Okay?
we'll move on to the next exercise number four write three simple methods of generating electricity we learn there are three main methods of generating electricity what are they using chemical cell or electric cells right and using dynamos and using solar cells right we'll write them number one using chemical cells due to chemical reactions using chemical cells using dynamos and using solar cells right children using chemical cells using dynamos using solar cells right number two write three examples for hydropower plants in sri lanka now you know many examples for this where are the places where hydropower plants are located children run benigala run tambe victoria upper kotmale so lakshapana there are a number of hydropower plants okay we'll write some of them we had to write three run benigala run tambe run tambe victoria okay you can write other examples too we'll move on to the next exercise number 5 Name two examples of wind power plants in Sri Lanka. Where are the main areas, children? Hambantota and Puttalam, right? We'll write Hambantota, Hambantota, Puttalam. Okay. write two examples for the other types of power plants in sri lanka here about wind power plants what are the other types of power plants we have hydro power plants thermal power plants and fuel power plants right we can write examples write two examples for the other types of power plants in sri lanka we we'll write the first example hydro power plant hydro power plant can write as examples uh, run benigala thermal power plants thermal power plant located in norochole right two examples you can even write fuel power plants diesel power plant in kalanithissa okay so hydro power plant in randenigala thermal power plant in norochole we can write okay next one number 6 which scientist discovered that an electric current is generated by moving a magnet inside a coil of wire now this is the basic theory behind dynamos who discovered this children michael faraday right michael faraday okay use in a diagram briefly explain how to generate electricity with a lime root now we did this activity so you can remember this very well i think right so how to generate electricity with the lime fruit children do you remember we inserted two metal sheets to the lime fruit what are the metal sheets children the copper and zinc sheets then what do we have to do we have to connect a galvanometer to this uh, 
two metal sheets and we have to observe the reading. Okay. We will draw the diagram first. So we can draw the line road like this and two metal sheets. So whenever we draw a diagram, you all know that we have to label it as well. And with two connective wire, we have to connect a galvanometer like this. Okay. We label this galvanometer, connective wire, copper sheet, zinc sheet, lime fruit. galvanometer, connective wire, copper sheet, zinc sheet, and this is the lime fruit. Okay children, so this is the diagram for the experiment. So we have to briefly explain this. We will write the steps. Insert a copper sheet and a zinc sheet. To a lime fruit. Then what do we have to do? Connect two pieces of wire wire to each metal sheet. Connect a galvanometer. Now, galvanometer is used to measure small currents. Galvanometer to the free ends. Free ends of the wire. Of the wires and observe. Okay. So when you set the apparatus like this and you have to connect a galvanometer to the free ends of the connective wire and observe what happens. When you do this activity you will see the indicator of the ammeter deflects which means electricity is generated. Electricity passes through this circuit. Okay. We will write that one as well. Galvanometer indicator deflects. So it deflects only if electricity passes through it, right? Which means at this point electricity is generated. Understand, children? We'll move on to the next. Right. Exercise number seven. Define what primary cells and secondary cells are and write one example for each of them. 
What is the meaning of primary and secondary cells, children? You all know that there are three main methods of generating electricity using chemical cells, using dynamos, and using solar cells, right? When it comes to chemical cells, you all know that they can generate electricity because of the chemical reactions take place. In those cells, there are chemical substances. Because of the reactions of these substances, electricity is generated. And there are two types of chemical cells. What are they? Primary and secondary cells. Why do we categorize them as, as a primary and secondary cells, children? Because the primary cells, when all the chemicals are used up, they cannot be recharged. We have to throw them away. But when it, when it comes to secondary cells, when the cells get exhausted, we can recharge them and use them. Right, children? What are the examples for primary cells, children? Dry cells are examples for primary cells. And secondary cells, vehicle batteries, uh, camera batteries are examples for secondary cells. We'll write them. Primary cells. They both are chemical cells, right? Primary cells. The chemical cells chemical cells that cannot be that cannot be recharged and we had to write an example for each example dry cells wristwatch cells okay secondary cells Secondary cells, the chemical cells that can be recharged. You can write example, car battery or let us see accumulate also correct. Car battery. Primary cells, the chemical cells that cannot be recharged, example, dry cells. Secondary cells, the chemical cells that can be recharged, car batteries, example. Okay? Question number two. Which instrument is used to measure an electric current flows through a circuit? What is the main instrument used, children? A meter. But at the same time, you all know to measure small electric currents, we can use milliameter and galvanometer as well. But here, to measure an electric current, the main instrument used is a meter. Let's write which instrument is used? A meter. We can write within brackets. Milliameter. Milliameter and galvanometer and galvanometer are used to measure small currents okay children a meter which instrument is used to measure an electric current flows through a circuit? That's basically a meter. But milliameter and galvanometer also used to measure small electric currents, right? We'll move on to the next. Exercise 8. The student prepared a circuit as given in the diagram. Look at this. Do you remember we did the exact same experiment? Right? Then he connected the materials given in the following table at X. You can see. There are two dry cells, connective wire, and a bulb. And there is a gap called X. Okay? So he placed these materials in this gap and observed. State whether the bulb lights up or not in each instance. 
right straight into the bulb lights up or not in each instance. Do you remember we did this activity to identify the conductors and insulators, right? So conductors, when we connect conductors to the gap, what happens? The bulb lights up. With insulators, the bulb does not light up, right? Plastic roller, conductor, insulator, children. Plastic is insulator, right? Therefore, with plastic, the bulb does not light up, right? That's right. Does not light up. Aluminium wire, aluminium wire is good conductor, right? Iron nail, iron also a very good conductor. Graphite rod, graphite is also a very good conductor. Do you remember when we were doing the activity, we used a pencil rod. Pencil rod means graphite rod, okay? Right. So with aluminium, iron and graphite, the bulb lights up, okay? Bulb lights up. Here also lights up. Graphite road also lights up, okay? Piece of cardboard. With cardboard, the bulb does not light up because cardboard is an insulator. Electricity does not flow through that, right? Piece of cardboard, the bulb does not light up. Right? Copper sheet. Copper is a very good conductor. So most of the time to do the, uh, to make the circuits, we use copper wire, right? So copper sheet, the bulb lights up. Rubber band and piece of cloth. They both are insulators. Therefore, the bulb does not light up. Does not light up. And piece of cloth also. The bulb does not light up. Right? So with plastic ruler, piece of cardboard, rubber band and piece of cloth, the bulb does not light up. But when we place the aluminium wire, iron nail, graphite rod and copper sheet in between these eggs, what will happen? The bulb lights up. Okay. You already know the reason for this. We'll move on to the next one. How do you decide whether an electric current flows through the circuit or not in each instance. It's pretty easy. How do you decide whether electricity flows through the circuit or not? Only when an electric current flows through the circuit, the bulb lights up. Right? So the bulb does not light up means what happens? The electricity does not flow through the circuit. Okay? We'll write that. When an electric current flows through the circuit. Flows through the circuit. The bulb lights up. Okay. How do you decide whether an electric current flows through the circuit or not in each instance? When an electric current flows through the circuit, the bulb lights up. Okay. What are the materials which carry electricity cold? So with some materials, the bulb lights up because those materials carry electricity. Right? So what is the name given to those type of materials, children? Conductors. What are the other materials that help with uh, carrying electricity, children? Those are insulators, okay? What are the materials which carry electricity called conductors? Electrical, 
electrical conductors. Okay. From the above materials, which materials carry electricity? We all know that the materials help with lighting up the bulb carry electricity. Aluminium wire, iron nail, graphite rod and copper sheet. Okay. We will write aluminium wire. Aluminium wire. Iron nail, graphite rod and copper sheet. Iron nail, graphite rod copper sheet understand children from the above materials which materials carry electricity the one that carries electricity when we fix that type of material the bulb should light up right so when we use these materials the bulb lights up which means these materials carry electricity and therefore they are known as conductors okay aluminium wire iron nail graphite rod and copper sheet right next one from the above materials which materials do not carry electricity with some of the materials when we fix some of these materials the bulb does not light up that is because those materials do not carry electricity right what are the materials here plastic ruler piece of cardboard rubber band piece of cloth right we'll write plastic ruler piece of cardboard rubber band and piece of cloth okay children from the above materials which materials do not carry electricity plastic ruler piece of cardboard rubber band and piece of cloth right Number seven, redraw the above diagram using circuit symbols. What is the diagram again? Look at this one. You all can see there are two dry cells. This is the positive terminal. This side is the negative terminal. Right? And a light bulb is connected and a gap is there. We will draw this. So there are two dry cells. So this is how we draw two dry cells and there was a bulb connector and there was a gap as well. So this is the gap called X. Okay, two dry cells connected to a bulb and here is a gap. To this gap we keep different different materials given and then these are the connective wire. Understand children? Right. Right, exercise number nine. Carefully observe this circuit, children. What can you see? You can see there are three dry cells. Look at this. Three cells are there. Okay, that is named as A. 
look at these children. What is this circuit symbol indicates? This is for LED or light emitting diode. What is the difference between the symbols of normal diode and light emitting diode? Normal diode, these two arrows are not there, right? But light emitting diode along with this normal diode symbol, these two arrows also there, okay? What is this? This is a switch. And here, what is this? This is for the resistor, right? And these lines for connective wire. Okay, children? Right. Study the above diagram and write the matching letter for the following components. Now, I already explained y'all, right? Diode D. Now, I told y'all normal diode or rectifying diode. Without these two arrows, we draw the symbol. Here says a diode, but this is LED, so also type of a diode. Therefore, answer is D, diode. Now, answer D. Resistor, resistor is this. This is how we draw the resistor, B. Switch, C. Okay, children. Next one. Does the diode light up when it is connected as above? Now, what is the specialty of a diode, children? LED, light emitting diode or rectifying diode, all the diodes. So, when we connect a diode to a circuit, remember, through a diode, electricity passes only in one direction. Okay, therefore, we have to connect the diode correctly to make the circuit work. Understand? How to connect the diode correctly, children? When it comes to the diode, there is a positive and negative terminal. So the positive terminal of the diode should be connected to the positive terminal of the external electricity supply. Right? So look at this diagram. When you consider these dry cells, what is the positive terminal? What is the negative terminal? You all know this long line indicates the positive terminal. The short line the negative terminal. So this side positive, the short line side is the negative term. Right? When we consider the diode, how to identify the positive and negative terminal? Do you remember I explained y'all? They asked this arrow. Now we will consider normal diode. When we draw the diode like this, this is how we draw the normal diode. So I told y'all when we draw the diode like this. This arrow head like part is pointed towards a negative terminal and the other side positive. Right children? So this is the negative terminal, this is the positive terminal. So when it comes to the LED, the only difference is these two outward arrows. Okay children? Therefore, when you look at this one, what is the positive terminal of this diode? This side is the positive terminal, this side is the negative terminal. Right? So does the diode light up, this LED? Does the LED light up when it is connected to the above? LED is also the same as the diode, right? So you all know that the long terminal, longer terminal, which means the positive terminal of the LED should be connected to the positive terminal of the cells. Look at this one. Positive terminal of the LED is connected to the positive terminal of the cell. Negative terminal of the LED or this diode is connected to the negative terminal of the cell. Which means this diode is connected correctly to the circuit. Therefore, a flow of electricity passes through this diode. Right? So this is an LED. If a flow of current passes through this diode or this LED, this LED lights up. Okay? Does the diode light up when it is connected as above? Yes, this is correct. Yes. What is the name of the above diode? This is an LED, light emitting diode. Light emitting diode. Or short for L. E D. Let me take the first letters of three words, okay? Light emitting diode or L E D, right? 
Next one. Now look at this picture. Is this the same or different? Now all these other parts are the same but this is different. You all can see this time the diode is connected. The terminals are changed. Okay. Now this is the positive terminal, negative terminal. But this side, this side is the positive, this side is the negative terminal. Okay. When the diode is connected as above, does it light up? No. Because I told you all, in order to light up, this LED should be connected in the correct way. What is the correct way? Positive terminal of the LED should be connected to the positive terminal of the external electricity supply, which means the dry cell. Right? But here, positive terminal of the dry cell is connected to the negative terminal of the diode. Therefore, at this point, the bulb or the LED does not light up. Right? When the diode is connected as above, does it light up? No. Give reasons for the above answer. We'll write the reason now. Electricity flows through an LED only in one direction. For this, the positive terminal of the LED should be connected to the positive terminal of the dry cell which means in order to light it up, dry cell. In the above circuit, the positive terminal of the LED is connected to the negative terminal of the dry cell. Therefore, therefore the LED does not light up. Okay, children, electricity flows through an LED only in one direction. For this, the positive terminal of the LED should be connected to the positive terminal of the dry cell. In the above circuit, the positive terminal of the LED is connected to the negative terminal of the dry cell. Therefore, the LED does not light up. We are asked to write the reason. Okay? We'll move on to the next. It was mentioned as 50 ohm. Now this mark is the symbol of ohm, right? It was mentioned as 50 ohms on B. What is B again, children? Look at this. B is the resistor. Okay? So resistor, it was marked as 
50 ohms. What is the meaning of this? Now, what is the resistor? Resistor is a certain device with resistance. The value of the resistor is 50 ohm, right? The resistance is measured in ohms, okay? The resistance is measured in ohms. So, if it is measured as 50 ohms, the resistance of the resistor is 50 ohms, right? We will write that. It is the... It is the value of the resistor. It is the value of the resistor. Okay, children? The value of the resistor is 50 ohms. Value is measured in ohms. Okay? We'll move on to the next. Exercise number 10. Write the names of three appliances that generate electricity. Now we discuss the same topic in different ways many times, okay? What are the main methods of generating electricity? Using dynamos, using chemical cells and using solar cells, right? Let's write dynamos, chemical cells or electrical cells and solar cells. They can generate electricity, okay? What is the appliance used to measure an electric current? So the main appliance used to measure an electric current is ammeter. But uh, in addition to the ammeter, we can use galvanometer and milliammeter to measure smaller currents, right? But as the main appliance, we will write ammeter. Ammeter. Right, the next one. Write the unit used to measure an electric current and the symbol of that unit. What is the unit used to measure electric current? Ampere. Ampere. And what is the symbol? Symbol is capital A. Symbol is capital A. Okay. Write the unit used to measure an electric current and the symbol of that unit. Unit is ampere. Symbol is capital A. Right? We'll move on to the next. Exercise 11. Write two instances where electricity is used at home. We use electricity for many purposes. To cook food, we use electricity. Sometimes to clean our house, we use electricity. We use in vacuum cleaners, we clean our house, right? And uh, to get light, to obtain light, we use electricity, right? We'll write. To cook food, and to wash clothes, washing machines, to wash clothes, okay, you can write many examples under this. Write two instances where electricity is used at home, to cook food, to wash clothes, right, to use electricity. Write two examples of an accident caused by electricity. So when you consider the accidents caused by electricity, there are three main instances, children. This is, a, this is an additional activity, but we we'll learn. So basically, we can discuss this under three main parts. Uh, electric shock, electrical burns, and electrical fire, right? We'll write them. Sometimes, we get electrocuted. Electric shock, that is one type of accident right and sometimes because of electricity because of uh, high heat fire is caused right electrical fire and burns as well electrical burns okay right Write three instances where waste stage of electricity takes place. What are the ways that electricity waste stage takes place, children? There are different ways. Sometimes we don't switch off the lights and other appliances after using, especially lights, right? 
the light bulbs when we don't switch them off electricity wastage takes place right so let's say that there are four family members if we iron our clothes at four different times what will happen the wastage is higher but if we all iron the clothes at the same time we can minimize the wastage okay and sometimes uh, we store very hot food in the refrigerator soon after cooking sometimes we store food in the refrigerator we have to wait till the food cools down and then only we have to store them in the fridge otherwise to cool them down also the refrigerator has to consume more energy right so those type of things we can write here there are different instances let's write them write three instances where wastage of electricity takes place number one not switching off light bulbs that are not in use. not in use. Number two. Not ironing clothes at the same time. Number three, storing very hot food in the refrigerator. Refrigerator. Okay, children, and opening the fridge door time to time, that is also an example, right? Not switching off light bulbs that are not in use, not tying in clothes at the same time, storing very hot food in the refrigerator. Okay, these are three instances. Right, we'll move on to the next. Exercise number 12. Redraw the following circuits using circuit symbols. Now we learn what are the circuit symbols? How to draw the circuit symbols? Now this is very easy for you all. Look at the first one. Here we have a bulb with two dry cells and connective wire. Here we have one bulb with connective wire and three dry cells. Now this is going to be pretty easy. We'll draw. So I'm going to draw the bulb first. Under A, and two dry cells, this side positive terminal, this side negative terminal. And connected with wire. Okay, children, bulb is here, two dry cells given, positive terminal this side, negative terminal this side, and connective wire, right? Okay, second one. The bulb And three dry cells, this side positive, this side negative. And 
connective wire. Okay, children. Electric bulb, three dry cells connected with wire. Okay. This was an easy one. We'll move on to the next. Exercise 13. First question. Redraw the following circuit using circuit symbols. This is also very easy. Two bulbs and one dry cell. Let's draw this. Two bulbs. And one dry cell. And connective wire. Right, children. Circuit symbols, two bulbs, one dry cell and connective wire. Okay? Right. Next one. What happens to the brightness of the bulbs when we connect more bulbs to the circuit in the above method? What is the special method? Two bulbs are connected in the same line. Do you remember we did a similar activity in the lab? First we connected two bulbs in the same line. Secondly, we connected two bulbs parallel to each other. What happened children? So when you compare the two, when the two bulbs connected in the same line, which means in series, and when the bulbs connected parallel to each other, the second method, which means the bulb connected parallel to each other, have higher brightness. Okay, which means when we increase the number of bulbs in the same line, what happens to the brightness, children? Brightness reduces. What is the main reason? When you increase the number of bulbs in the same line, what happens to the length of the conductor, children? The length of the circuit increases. Now, we all know when the length of the circuit increases, the path of the current flowing also increases. Right? The length of the path of the current also increases. When the length of the path of the current flowing increases, what happens to the resistance? Resistance also increases. And when the resistance increases, what happens to the amount of electric current flows through the circuit? Reduces. So when the amount of electric current flows through the circuit reduces, the brightness of the bulbs reduces. Right? Therefore, what will happen? What happens to the brightness of the bulbs when we connect more bulbs to the circuit in the above method? This method means the same line, right? In series method. What will happen to the brightness, children? The brightness decreases. Let's write. The brightness decreases number three mention an instance where bulbs are connected to a circuit in the above method right which means in the same line so you have seen there are different types of uh, bulb lines used in different different functions okay during Vesak seasons when in order to decorate uh, Christmas trees we use those type of uh, bulb lines okay so in those type of bulb lines decorative bulbs those bulbs are connected in the same line okay let's write mention an instance where the bulbs are connected to a circuit in the above method the decorative bulbs Decorative bulb used in functions for decorations, right? 
to decorate Christmas trees, right? During Vesak season, during different functions, to illuminate, we use this type of decorative bulb lines. Okay, children? We'll move on to the next. This is our last exercise for this lesson. Write three different types of resistors that you know. There are three main types of resistors. What are they, children? Permanent resistors where we cannot change the value of the resistor. And then the second one is variable resistor. The value can be changed. The resistance can be changed. And light sensitive resistors. Okay, let's write them. Permanent resistors. Permanent resistors. We can't change the resistance. Number two, variable, variable resistors, where the resistance can be changed, right? You remember we learned about rheostat as an example for variable resistors, okay? Variable resistors. Number three, light sensitive light sensitive resistors okay light sensitive resistors so according to the amount of light falls onto the resistor the resistance changes okay children right next one draw the circuit symbol of the resistor that changes the resistance according to the intensity of light that falls on it what is this, children? The resistor that changes the resistance according to the intensity of light means LDR. This is about LDR or light dependent resistor. We can draw the circuit symbol. Right. So I showed you two types of symbols. and two arrows okay light falls onto the resistor and the second one it's also little similar to normal resistor Right. Okay, children. So, both the types are correct. Okay. So, these two arrows indicate light falling onto the resistor. Right, children. Right. Now, we have completed the entire lesson. Do you remember what we learn in this lesson? We learn about what are the instances we use electricity in our day-to-day -day activities. And now we know that electricity is very important to engage in our day-to-day -day activities. And we learn that what are the methods of generating electricity. And we learn further about uh, electrical appliances, electronic components. And we learn how to make circuits, different ways of fixing different types of components to circuits we learn. And we learn about conductors and insulators. And we further learn about some electronic components and how to fix them to different types of circuits in different ways. And finally, we learn about conservation of electricity and also how to prevent accidents caused by electricity. So the lesson is completed. We did a lot of experiments as well. Now we have completed the exercise. So in order to practice this lesson, to check whether you understood this lesson, uh, very well. You can do the uh, activities again and check whether you understood them very well. 